I've been married last, last fall, I never really like considered telling jokes because it's so daunting. And um, growing up, I never really kind of the same kind of pressure was on. I never really felt like pulling off uh, practical jokes. And uh, do we have any practical jokers in here? Yeah. Yeah. A couple of them. I just turned off my red light. <laughs> All the time. Oh, well. No. But um, I'm here to tell you tonight about the time that I killed a sumo. <laughs> Um, yeah, it is. To be specific, his name was Sedibu the Rap Sumo. Now, he, as you can probably gather by his moniker, he, uh, you, you, he's a rapper. But he, being a sumo, he was not Japanese. This was a 23-year-old African-American man from Clackamine, Louisiana. Real big town. Real big town. With sarcasm. <laughs> he found an audience though on YouTube. Um, being a rapper. He had a really high voice. I got this Jesus piece of rum on that kind of a voice. Um, but he was called a sumo because he was 650 pounds. And he garnered some sort of following on YouTube, dancing around half naked with big gold chains around his neck, which he called donkey ropes. <laughs> and uh, so, I wouldn't say he was a famous rapper, but he had a little bit of a YouTube following. Now, working where I do, uh, I work with uh, many colorful characters, interesting people. <laughs> you find yourself in a break room with some, very, some people with some very interesting characteristics, and uh, <laughs> I spent a lot of time in a break room with a young gentleman, skinny white dude. For the sake of this joke, we'll call him Jason Edward Martin. And, uh, sorry, his middle name is Gregory. Jason Gregory Martin. And he was Teddy Boo's biggest fan. I can't explain why. This, this is also the same person who told me about chemtrails and, and stuff like that. So that's kind of his personality. But he was Seti Boo's biggest fan to the point where he had Seti's cell phone number in his phone. Because Seti, you know, I, he, at some point he had a YouTube video where he said, Hey, here's my phone number, hit me up, I'm gonna answer some calls. So Jason like, had it programmed in his phone and would call him from time to time. Never actually connected but uh, left a couple of voicemails for Mr. Seti Boo, the rap sumo. <laughs> well, uh, April Fool's Day was coming up in the year 2013, just a few years ago, and I just had the brilliant idea to fake Seti Boo's death. Um, for Jason. Because we were working together, it was going to be, you know, April Fool's Day, and so a couple of my other buddies that I worked with were web designers, and so we created a cl clap of mine local website and put on the front page of the news uh, the shocking death of Seti Boo to Rap Sumo. And indirectly led him, like we let him discover the web page during our lunch break because I had a friend share it on my Facebook, and I was like, Jason, look at my Facebook. Is, is this Seti Boo's dead, bro? And he was like, oh my god. His reaction was amazing. In, in our 30 minute lunch break, he went through all five stages of grief. <laughs> and we had hidden cameras rolling. <laughs> so it was fun to watch the whole thing unfurl. I'm serious. And it, it was like, I can't explain to you, like, I don't know who decided on those five stages, but it was like clockwork. He went through denial. No, man, no, this ain't real. This ain't real, this ain't dead. To, oh my god. Dude, it's because he was gonna come to LA. It's a conspiracy, they're trying to kill him. Oh my god. To, oh man, this can't be right. Is this the right link? Where's this lead? This, this doesn't even lead anywhere, guys. To, oh, I can't believe it. I'm still gonna watch the videos every day. So, oh man, this sucks. And so, we get to the point, there's always that awkward, I mean, I say always, but I don't often pull practical jokes. But you reach this juncture where it's like, so where do we tell him it's a joke? 
so we're all just kind of looking at each other like, do we do it now? Do we do it now? And uh, that's when the most unexpected and beautiful turn happened. And Jason looked at his phone and he said, I had to call him. <laughs> Anyway, I'll <laughs> At least I'm gonna answer. I have to tell them what he meant to me. Because <laughs> every put on speakerphone, every ring was like, don't pick up phone. <laughs> don't pick up, don't pick up phone. Okay. Straight voice out. The next three minutes was the most beautiful <laughs> part of said, I know we never met. I told you if you came to Disneyland, I'd get you in. <laughs> but I watch your videos every night. I know every one word for word. You inspire me. We never met. It's a powerful thing, bro. I just read that you died. <laughs> There's this hole inside me now. And but I'm gonna keep your spirit alive. I'm gonna spread, you know. He, he already had the SetiBoot.com and like Jason owned like all the fan websites that could potentially happen if So he's like, I'm gonna turn them into memorial sites. People are gonna remember you. Your life will not be in vain, SetiBoo. I love you, bro. Rest in peace, man. He hangs up. And we're just like, trying not to laugh. And also trying not to cry. It was beautiful. And just as I'm opening my mouth to say April Fool's, the next turn happens. Jason's phone rang. It was steady boo. Yo, man, what you talking about? I'm dead. I ain't dead. The joy on Jason's face was oh, oh, oh. He was sitting on the couch, kicking his feet. Say who's not dead! Say who's not dead! It was so amazing, and I'm just like, I want to take credit for the fact that it's the first time Sadie Boo called him back. <laughs> he actually got to talk to his idol. But then, um, unfortunately, eight months later, Sadie Boo died. <laughs> in a tragic car accident that I had nothing to do with. <laughs> but sometimes I wonder. Yeah. And then I think, maybe I'm good. <laughs> so that's like the only real practical joke I ever played. I do have in my head a cue of things I would love to do, but never will. I promise, I didn't, well, I don't promise, but I, I'm telling you, I don't plan on. Like one day, I want to go to a, a Target store wearing khakis and a red shirt. And anytime somebody asks me a question, I'm going to answer it immediately with a terrible your mom joke, followed by an obscene gesture, and the wide eyed slow back away. Your mom has a size 600 in the back. <laughs> Do you guys carry bicycle inner tubes? Your mom carries bicycles inner tubes. Detective on like some heinous crimes and uh, just randomly place celebrities into my suspect lineups. <laughs> Come on in, ma'am. I'm very sorry your husband was brutally murdered in front of your eyes. We've gathered together some suspects. Uh, see if you recognize anyone. <laughs> it's like scruffy guy, shady looking guy, big B looking dude. Matt came in and Ben Affleck. <laughs> Well, it's definitely number three. He killed my husband, but is that Matt Damon and Ben Affleck? 
Ma'am, we're not allowed to disclose the identity of our suspects. That's crazy. <laughs> it looks like my identity Ben Affleck. And for just 30 seconds ago, I forgot that my husband was brutally murdered. <laughs> we will, hunty. Uh, I also have this uh, idea. This, this, if this ever happened, it would be the greatest inside joke ever in the history of the world. Um, so, the only people that would ever find it funny are you guys <laughs> and the 542 people involved. But, um, so I had to start with a little backstory of how uh, this, we had to prep for this. We had to find like a remote location like an island or over like toward the Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle or somewhere in the African, South African bush, you know, somewhere off the grid, somewhere no one would ever look. And we have to build a compound there that could house 542 people for a year. Then we have to cast it. And we have to find 542 people who are really good at keeping secrets, really good liars, and secretly want to be famous. So, I mean, we have We'd have to get 542 method actors, essentially. <laughs> and in those, in that group of people, we'd have to have a couple of flight attendants and pilots, because one day they would all be on a flight together. I'm a gentleman for you. Oh yeah, could you just sign that off for me? Thanks. <laughs> Peace is here, everybody. <laughs> what? Gone, Who's gone? Oh, whose pizzas? I don't know. We're gonna eat. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. If anybody could sign, just sign my name for those, that'd be awesome. Thanks. So anyway. That was that was appropriate. I just got hijacked. So anyway. These 542 people will be on a 747 one day and this plane will disappear. It'll be gone. You guys know where it is, but the world doesn't. <laughs> they are living on this compound now. For the next year, some people are learning new skills. Uh, some people are writing stories and uh, just, you know, perfecting their story of what happens. Because exactly 365 days later, one year after they were scheduled to land, this plane would land. And every person on board would have a different story about the flat. <laughs> Some people would be like, no, it was just a normal flat. Other people would be like, yeah, he lives. <laughs> Some people would be like, I don't know, I fell asleep. <laughs> but I woke up knowing jujitsu. Check this shit out. <laughs> The world would go nuts. It would shock the press. It would shock the world to its core. And the best part about it is that only us would know. <laughs> we would be like the inside of the biggest inside joke ever pulled off. You're welcome. Yeah. So just watch, next time a pain disappears. <laughs> You guys are gonna be like, Polly? Are you hiding a 747 in the bush? You know what I'm gonna say. Your mom's had a 747 in the bush. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I got a